So here we go again. I'm Grant M. Fletcher, creator of Seeing Sounds Visuals. You might know me from such projects as this and this and this, but most likely not, but you're here now watching this video. Let's jump into another one of my projects and I'll show you how I created this photocopy effect to take crisp, shiny 3D objects and turn them into terrible ink mess. We're going to look at textures and blending modes and posterizing time and wiggle and roughening edges and let's just jump into it. All right, so first off, if you want to make something look real, it's got to be real. What do I mean by that? Textures, people. I'm talking about textures. The textures for this photocopy look, I found most of them at texturefabric.com. I believe these guys might be German or something, hence the K on the end of fabric. Anyway, awesome free textures that you should absolutely check out, but why not donate as well? I know I have. So from some of these awesome textures, I end up making two pre-comps, one called uh, Dirty Photocopy and the other called Clean Photocopy. Now, obviously they're both pretty messed up. They're both pretty dirty, but one has a lot more obvious lines to it, a lot more brighter elements, whereas the other one is more almost like a grain texture, a little bit less in your face. Now they're both set up to have a frame per image. That's not going to matter so much because we can change the length and the timing once we get into our other compositions. So let's start building a look here. So I've got dirty photocopy in here and I've got it set to screen. I have gone in and put a little expression in that says loop out. So it's gonna continuously loop. And I've also stretched out the timing a fair bit um, with two keyframes here. What I'm also gonna chuck on there is posterized time. Now this really helps sell the stop motion look. Posterized time is your friend. What it's doing is it's saying that even if this is made in 30 frames or 60 frames, it's only going to play back at you know five frames. And that sounds counterintuitive, but that's really the way to, to sell it. Usually stop motion, you're doing it at like half frames. So 12 frames, for example, um, but in this case, I'm way down at five frames a second, as if that I could only bother to print out that many frames a second for this animation. So if we look at this 3D layer, it's a skull. Uh, at the moment, it's white, but it doesn't look very papery. Let's put on these paper textures. Still just looks like it's floating behind some paper textures, right? Well, let's start to mess with it. Because photocopy doesn't have that much dynamic range, I wanna really crush the blacks. Um, so I'm, I'm using a curves adjustment. Another way to do that um, is that you can use a levels adjustment. And then I'm also using posterize, telling it to only have two levels here. So if I went seven levels, it's gonna give you a different look again, which could be cool for something else. But in this case, I just want literally black or literally white because I've got this set up with a multiply. Anything that's white, I can't see. It's now just black on purple. So that's already starting to look better. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tint because photocopies are not very good with printing actual black. Uh, white is fine because the white is what the paper originally was but black, you know, maybe not so much. Or, you know, okay, but it's still ink. You know, it's not it's not actual screen black. So that's just tinted to a little bit of a gray going on there. I've also put a slight amount of Gaussian blur on there just because it, it doesn't quite print out as crisp as it would in digital screen format. And that's really as simple as it is to make 3D objects look completely terrible. Well, let's have a look at another example though, just to prove my point. So in here, we have another 3D object. I've created this kind of array of bones, as it were, that like to rotate around and do a little bit of this and that. And again, it still looks like 3D floating in the middle of nowhere. So let's do that curves adjustment, that posterize, that tint, and then Gaussian blur. Now, another thing that I've got going on is a wiggle. So the way it prints out might be mostly straight, but then when I scanned it in again, it might have had a little bit of movement between the frames. So this kind of wiggle really helps to sell that look and the posterize is making sure that it's not too fluid, it's quite jumpy. The wiggle I've got set up is 10 comma 30, have a look at so many YouTube videos that explain wiggle. I'm not gonna go into it here, but I use wiggle on position a lot. 
Now let's jump into some ideas on text. I've got a big word here that says live. I've got another little texture here that's doing a jumpy rotate. It's like scratches on um, something. And that's just multiply on top of that text, just, just giving it a little bit more text. You can kind of see it here if I turn it off. There it's gone. There it is back again, just making it look that little bit grungier. So now let's look at the text itself. We've got this really fun thing called rough and edges. Now, if you haven't used this before, it is very useful. If I was to turn on rough and edges on the text layer, this is pretty much what it will look like. You can do a lot of things with it, but in this case, it's just giving me a slightly rougher edge. It doesn't quite look like paper just because of that. Um, so I've got this extra layer here. Now the photocopy look on rough and edges is actually just going to give you an outline. And if you look at it really closely, it actually kind of does resemble photocopy. Um, so that's really cool already, but it's only giving you kind of this inside of an outline. So I've used that and then roughened that as well and then given it a layer underneath. And then if you have a look at the whole thing, that's kind of what it comes out as. Not perfect. I'm just trying to make it look as terrible as possible. In here, you can see I've used rough and edges on this text as well. And this is all just one big text layer that has a typewriter effect animating on and off in a loop. And the rough and edges is really just giving it a little bit of that extra crappiness. If I pull out there, that looks way too digital, doesn't it? Rough and edges, oh, suddenly it's looking a little bit more like photocopy. So there you have it. Really, the secret here is you need real textures. Make sure you posterize the time. Make sure that you posterize the actual look of it so that there's only really two colors, black and white. Consider making black a little bit more gray and just have fun with it. See what you can come up with. Maybe even, hey, why not print some stuff out? scan it back in and see how awesome that looks. It's gonna look better than this. If you wanna use these loops in your edit or for your church service, then go to seeingsoundsvisuals.com. The pack is called Rattle. There's 254 assets, 45 of those being loops in multiple aspect ratios, including 4K. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, everything they tell you on YouTube. But honestly, this stuff comes out semi-sporadically, so it's probably a good idea that you get notified. If you could do me a huge favor, jump onto seeingsoundsvisuals.com, have a look through the different packs, and tell me in the comments below what you would like me to do a tutorial on next. Peace.